Hey everyone, welcome back to our IPFS 101 series, where we're talking about what IPFS is, how it works, and how it relates to blockchain. If you missed our last video, you can watch it here. But in short, IPFS is a distributed file system that works in tandem with the blockchain. But in this video, we're going to basically cover what is IPFS used for exactly? Why do we need it? Probably the most popular use case for IPFS is NFTs. If you're not too familiar with what NFTs are, they're essentially digital assets that live on the blockchain that you can buy, sell, trade, or create. When NFTs first started coming out, there was a small problem. One of the big things with NFTs and the value behind NFTs is the fact that they're decentralized, that they can't be altered, they can't be changed, and they can last maybe a really long time. That was a problem because of one thing. Blockchains are really good at storing a list of transactions, but they're not actually good at storing data. It can be very expensive. Because of that, all the information about the NFT, such as the image itself, the name of the NFT, who created it, the description about it, all this stuff is tied into something called NFT metadata. And that NFT metadata is also kind of large and can't necessarily live on the blockchain. NFTs back then basically had a link pointing to that metadata. And this was essentially called the token URI. The URI is the core of the NFT and what it is, what it's about. Back in the day, it would point to a centralized server. And this caused a problem. And let me give you an illustration as to why that was a problem. So let's say we had an NFT and the metadata had, you know, all the information about the NFT. And in that metadata, it also had a link pointing to an image. And that image link was HTTPS app.server.com slash penny.png. Well, there's not really anything stopping anybody from the person who owns that server just changing the data. So they could either delete it and then the image would be gone. And what's the point of an NFT at that point? Or they could replace it because, you know, you can just take that image down and then upload something with the same name, penny.png. It could be something like a poop emoji, be something totally different. It would basically ruin the point of the NFT because what's the point of an NFT if you can't be sure that the assets won't change or like the thing you're buying is going to stay valuable. So what happened next? IPFS steps in. IPFS or Interplanetary File System does two things for this problem. The first thing is that IPFS is a decentralized file sharing network. So there's not just one person that controls all the data about an NFT. Second, IPFS uses something called the CID, which we'll get into in a later video. But the CID, which stands for the Content Identifier, is like a unique fingerprint for the NFT. That fingerprint is determined by the contents of the file. And this is really important because it ensures immutability, so you can't change the content, and it also ensures that the address is going to be unique. So for instance, if we go back to our previous example, with our old example of a centralized server, you can very easily just swap the images and the link would still be app.server.com slash penny.png. Well, that doesn't really work with IPFS. IPFS, the CID or this hash, is cryptographically determined. It's based off the content of the file. So the image of Penny is gonna have a completely different CID than the image of a poop emoji or something like that. And this helped ensure early on that NFTs could be verifiable and secure and immutable. Another thing that IPFS adds to this is that it ensures that anybody who values this content can make sure it persists on the network. Anyone can take this CID and help pin it to the network and making it even harder to take down. If there's no pins left, then eventually the NFT or the image would disappear. But as long as one person is pinning it, it keeps going. And if other people say, hey, I really value this NFT or this project is really important, I'm going to pin it as well. And you have a community of people able to persist the data on the network. We have a really cool story on that and how that actually plays out in real life. You can check down the link below for a blog post. Now, this is just one application of IPFS, and there are actually lots of other ways that IPFS is used in tandem with blockchain. Another really big one is DeFi or decentralized finance. In DeFi, you also have lots of metadata about transactions or swaps or tokens all these different things that you want to make sure are not mutable. You want to make sure that they don't change and the blockchain can't store the data. You have the same problem of it's too expensive to store on chain, but you also need a system off chain that helps ensure immutability and verifiable addresses. There's also Web3 gaming because with current games, if you buy a suit of armor or a sword or some kind of weapon in game, there's no really guarantee that you get to keep that item or maybe that you can trade it between other characters and that it won't just disappear one day. IPFS and blockchain can help solve that problem by making sure that that data is verified and stays there. 
IPFS is also used to preserve important parts of history. So it's used by journalists or people that want to make sure that web pages stay on the web. IPFS can be used to help persist that data for years and years to come. So just to recap, IPFS is used for helping preserve data that can't be stored on chain because it's too large and be too expensive, but also helps ensure that it is verified and immutable and they both work together. If you want to learn more about IPFS, be sure to check out our blog post below on our website, but also be sure to subscribe to this channel as we're going to continue our IPFS 101 series and learn more about what IPF is and what you can do with it. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them down below. Be sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed it. And until next time, happy pinning.